Welcome back to the show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. Joining me is another fantastic author, brilliant man, if you will, Jason Harris. He wrote a book called The Soulful Art of Persuasion, The 11 Habits That Will Make Anyone a Master Influencer. I love it. Hey, Jason, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be here. This is awesome. How did you uh, get started in this? How did you get into the advertising business? So I have a really dorky story. Um, I love dorky you stories. Want to hear All right. So I, I'm a living when, one. <laughs> so when I was uh, about, I was a TV addict growing up as a kid. And when I was 12 or 13, I was really into, in between the shows I was watching, I was into those commercial breaks. And I love the Kool-Aid man and, you know, Mikey likes it and uh, Lego My Ego. Yeah. And I, I just, I would realize someone did that for a living. Someone had to get paid to make those things in between those uh, shows I was watching. And so when I was a young kid, I realized I'm just going to figure out how to do that. And that's going to be my career, which is very okay. odd for, uh, I have a 12 year old now and there's no way he would even think about a career right now. No. And that's where you definitely know you are on your correct path. You know, right. when people are like, definitely. I've got to find my purpose in life. You knew it at that age, which is a game changer. If you could start that early knowing what the fuck you want to do. I know it's kind of a depressing purpose to sell products to people. You know what I mean? Like, See, but I think it's <laughs> incredible because I, if I d wasn't doing what I'm doing, I would have had seven other careers because I'm like, I would have been a special ed teacher, a nurse, but or a marketing uh, advertiser because I love marketing. I love because there's there's some um, psychology in definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's creative field. It's collaborative. You work with a group of people to come up with uh, and sell the idea and then sell it to sell it to the client, sell it to the consumer. It's really fun. I mean, I'm 20, 20 something years into it and I still wake up every day stoked for it. So, uh, I can't complain. Who can I blame for all of these scripts that I've gotten from marketing companies to do ads where I read it and I'm like, who talks like this? And this is like the <laughs> who's gonna remember? It's like so stupid. Sometimes you they just don't take make sense. a red pen and you cross it out and rewrite it. I wish I had that power, all but right, no. Okay. I all got to right. try to make sense of it. I, I won't put it on you. I just wanted to vent for a moment for all hey, the man, years. Some of our stuff, not all our stuff's great, but you know, we, we try our best. So, so when, at what point did you manage to lean less on like lies? Not that you ever kind of, I'm putting that on you, but, um, and more on character. When did you go like, okay, I'm going to figure this out the right way. Yeah. So, uh, th that kind of prompted the book. And so I realized I started a advertising agency about 15 years ago with, a group of friends um, and, you know, learning from other places that I worked, I realized what pillars and beliefs we wanted to have and how we wanted to create a culture that was more transparent and authentic. And the way we wanted to work was a little bit different. And then as a CEO and an entrepreneur, I would read a lot of business books. I know you've written a, a, a bunch of books, slew of books. I would always read business books to try to stay sharp or figure out different ways in and approaches that people had. And I realized there was a, a kind of white space in the market where it wasn't, it was always sort of like life hacks or transactional thinking to get ahead. And it missed that sort of soul part, which is the soulful part of the book, which is playing the long game and building relationships and not thinking in terms of transaction, but thinking in terms of relationships and playing the long game. And I realized I had something to say in the business world that was a little bit different from the books I was reading. I think you're really smart to do that, by the way, because you're oh, right, that you. is what's lacking. And I'm noticing the younger generation, um, they, they demand authenticity. Definitely. You know, and they like demand we, brands stand for something, yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Let me plug the book again, because I know we have a lot of people that will love it. The Soulful Art of Persuasion, the 11 Habits That Will Make Anyone a Master Influencer. I ordered it already. I'm waiting for my copy because this is right up my alley. I'm going to be like <laughs> slurring it up. Um, so what do you do? What do you do, Jason, when I'm like, uh, when, how do I say this? When a client comes to you and you don't like the product, but you have to sell it, what do you do? I mean... We're in a business, right? Like anyone. And so we have uh, four offices, a lot of employees. We got to keep the machine going. So um, we can be choiceful with, with the companies we work with and the brands we work on. But we, um, we you know, we'll have to sometimes uh, sell products that aren't 
may be the greatest or could be improved. And we'll have to figure out an honest or transparent way in to sell those products. There are times when we turn down business, if it's, you know, uh, you know, tobacco product, if it's uh, a company that's known for being against, uh, you know, gay, gay rights or, or against gender equality. So there's, there's certain uh, brands that will turn down. Um, but our, our job is to find the good in the product and the service and try to find the right message, but do it in a, as honest way as, as possible. And sometimes uh, we talked about the younger generation wanting brands to stand for something and have a purpose. Sometimes you can unearth uh, something greater than the product or service. You can unearth, like one of our companies is Ben and Jerry's. They do an amazing job of not selling ice cream, but they're selling ideals and progressive uh, policies along with a pint of ice cream. And there's, there's brands that um, you, know, you can do that with that it comes from the core. And there's some brands that don't want to sell purpose. They just want to sell the products or service. So you kind of deal with the client that you have to deal with. So then do you have to sit down with the creator of the brand to find their soulful purpose or you have to find it from yourself? Uh, yeah, you usually you'll you'll dig deep into why the company f- was founded, what's behind the company or what core values the company has. And then you'll either unearth it because it already exists or you'll help create it. But it has to be endemic to the company or the brand. It ha- the brand that's solving a problem, the product solving a problem, it's talking to a certain group of people. You'll either create it with them or it's already there and they're not talking about it enough. Um, talk about your, uh, your rap video with your son. How did that come to be, by the way? Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, during COVID, it's been challenging to keep uh, your kids creative. I have two boys a 10 and 12 year old, I'm in a co-parenting situation. So they kind of go back and forth. And it, uh, it's been really challenging to keep them entertained and off their devices. And it, they just closed uh, New York schools today, by the way. Right. I just tomorrow. That. I know. And so I that's going to be even, even harder. So I had to, you know, figure out ways to keep them entertained. So we weren't just watching Netflix and, you know, beyond helping them with their homework. So one thing we created was this idea called rap battles where we would pick a topic out of a hat and then we would each have five minutes and we'd come up with a rap and then we would present the rap and they'd have to perform it. So it teaches them how to like perform in front of other people, how to write really quickly, get over their fears and, and rap. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm like not very good, but they're, they've, <laughs> they've gotten much better, but it's a really fun rap battle. I, I play it with, uh, you know, if I, when I did see my parents, I'd make them play it. Uh, and I, That's you know, everywhere so awesome. I go, I just pull up rap battles and it's a great way to interact with people. And it's really fun. That's so, a yeah. really good idea to do with your kids. We actually did this on our show with my little producers and crew members. We just picked a title and we just rapped. We're the worst rappers you'll ever yeah. hear. <laughs> but to do it with your kids, I think that's a good idea. And I love encouraging creativity because all these shoot 'em up games, there's no fucking creativity in that. Oh my God, I know. I know. It's the, they're the worst. I mean, <clears throat> we have to we have to put like phone limits on their phones so they can't just play games all day. Um, right. But you know, I think just coming up during this that that's one thing that's been great about COVID is, and I know no one would has ever said that statement, but it has forced you to create different ways to connect with your kids and with other people who whatever living situation you're in. And so we do. You know, we've been doing a lot of like gratitude journals. We do that every Sunday. My kids, you know, kicked and screamed. Now they're now they ask like every Sunday, when are we doing them? But at the beginning, they were like, "We're not doing that, Dad." It's so (laughs) dorky. And now they're (laughs) now they do that. And we we also play this game uh, that my friend turned me on to called Fictionary, where you look up a word that's like a crazy word, like cattywampus, and you find the real definition, and then you write two fake definitions and then you go around and try to pick the words. So I think just, you know, families trying to come up with fun ways to connect and and entertain uh, uh, kids during this time is really critical and and stay creative. That's the most important thing. So well said, you might have another book on your hands or some games that you might need to produce because these are some great I I still got to market this one, man. (laughs) 
You know what that's like. Marketing I do. Books. That's why I Hustle. keep plugging it. That's why I keep plugging exactly. it. The soulful Thank art you. of persuasion, the 11 habits that will make anyone a master influencer. I have a lot of friends that um, are used quarantine time to launch their dreams. Okay, so they're starting in their basement. I do too. I've been fucking preaching this for years. Like, follow your passion. This is our time, and they're. It's so adorable because they're they're up and just you know just that barely running a few sales a day. And there's so many of people out there that are at that level. What advice can you give them in that early those early stages so they, besides reading the book, yeah, to market correctly. So, I mean, if you're starting a side hustle business or if you're, you know, if you're, you've got a job, you're starting a side hustle business, maybe you're doing something on Etsy, whatever you might be doing, or if you're starting any business, I, you know, when, when I started my company, the, the one thing that I did, um, me and my partners decided to do that was, I think, really smart is we did a lot of work for free to build the muscles and get those brands on our roster. So we were legit. And so I think a lot of people starting businesses don't worry about the money for now. And hopefully you're in a position where you don't have to be because you've got other income or money saved and worry about building the brand and getting those reps and getting your product out there and leveraging influencers and trying to get the message of your product out there. But starts with a good idea. It starts with being clear on your purpose and why the product exists and then figuring out how to just get it out there as much as possible and the money will come later. Don't worry about making money on it because that's not going to happen at the beginning. And the most important thing is to get it out there. Totally. And if you fail, it doesn't mean quit forever. Yeah, it means definitely just pivot. <laughs> yeah. Try something new. I, what, you know, what I hate is a lot of, um, a lot of pundits will say if you're not hustling hard enough, if, if it didn't, if it didn't catch on, sometimes you just have a shitty idea. You know, sometimes right. the idea just isn't going to work, but go back and refine the idea or come up with a different idea in a similar industry, or you've got other ideas in there. Keep going. You'll, you'll catch fire with something. Um, but don't just beat something if it's not working. That's uh, right. If, if, yeah, that's that's how I. I mean, I, I I chose tons of shitty men in my life. I didn't quit men. <laughs> well, now you got Donnie, so you're good to go. <laughs> exactly, because I learned, and that's another thing: learn from right. those mistakes and use them. Jason Harris, I love this book. I can't wait to actually have it in my hand and read it and apply it. Uh, the soulful art of persuasion. I know you guys want this book, The 11 Habits That Will Make Anyone a Master Influencer. The book is out now. Hopefully, this is to be continued. You're a smart guy. I like what you have to say, and good luck to you. I hope this book sells like crazy. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.